Good afternoon, Tula. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. How are you? It's been a while since we last spoke. I know, I know. It's been a few months. What? Yeah. How are things? What's What's been going on for your business since we spoke? Yeah, yeah. Since we last spoke, so I think it was in the summer we when we last spoke, and since then, I've had it as a like a side hustle sort of while I was been working full time, and. I have to admit, I am guilty and I did quite kind of neglect that while I was being caught up with work. But um, after a few conversations with people, I decided to get things up and running again. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to have that conversation today. Oh, fantastic. Sounds like yeah. this has come at a good time then. So yeah. let's go back to the beginning. I mean, you were one of our first Mavericks. <laughs> you you actually started in COVID, 2020 in COVID. Yeah. And you were, so we're 2024 now, and you were yeah. um, you were in your first year doing international business yeah. at Trent. Yeah, international business. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and so we'd had, if I remember rightly, correct me if I'm wrong, we had a conversation and I said, you, I mean, you were just so entrepreneurial and you just showed yeah. such a flair for, like, the creative side of marketing. And I could mm. see you were picking things up really fast, um, different yeah. softwares and stuff. And I remember saying like, oh, why don't you come on the Mavericks program? And, and you were just, you were just like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. And you just flew yeah, through the it. course. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. what do you remember about, I mean, <laughs> it's a long time ago. What do you remember about, about the Mavericks program back then? And yeah, I'll come on to a part B about what's been happening since then. Yeah. So I'm not too sure how it's changed over time, but I remember when I first did it, um, it was off the back of a conversation I had with you when you were a guest lecturer at one of my um, lectures. So I reached out to you, um, just asking for advice and um, how you're into marketing. And you sent me the link to, it was like a portal of your VIP Touchpoints yeah, website. And I remember, yeah, and I remember um, going through the website, doing the questionnaire, like, um, uh, I can't remember. It was like, um, what kind of like what kind of services do you want to offer? Um, how would you want to price these services? Who would your ideal market be? And it was like all these questions are really thought provoking. And I was like, okay, this I'm actually getting somewhere with this. It's actually making me think of a strategy to actually yeah. um, bring into fruition. And I think after a month of that I came up with the idea of free flow marketing and doing like social media posts website design and um just branding in general and then yeah I've not looked back since I've, ever since so that's how I started and you've worked on some really interesting projects as well haven't you in that yeah. time yeah def projects that I thought I'd never like actually come across because yeah it's actually crazy how how these opportunities come come by and like networking and stuff and it's like yeah when I look back at it it's like I'm you know, really impressed by myself especially as my first year as well yeah and so tell me about the name free flow marketing because I know this is something that um when Mavericks are going through the program it's one of those things where they think do I trade under my name like Victoria Prince or do I make a company name like Touchpoints Marketing like, yeah. how did you go through that thought process and, and how did you end up with free flow marketing? Because I, rem I remember the time when you told me and I was like, I really love this. Have you checked the <laughs> box and everything? And you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so the yeah. So initially, I think it wasn't actually free flow marketing originally. I think I can't remember what it was originally. I think it was just like TD marketing. My initials as like a placeholder because yeah, yeah. I didn't really I couldn't really think of anything. And I knew I didn't want to stick with that, but I just had that just there. I didn't want to focus too much on actually a name and a logo. I wanted to actually think about the strategy and the services that I wanted to provide first. Yeah. And then I think I was just reading a book one time and I saw the word free flowing and I was like, that sounds really nice. So I did, I like I searched what free flowing meant and like the definition was, was like something that moves in a continuous stream and something that doesn't and something that like, can't be stopped so it'd be like a free-flowing river or a fleet of free-flowing traffic oh and I was like, beautiful I really, yeah I really like the concept of that so I just put yeah free flow marketing that's it and it was a light bulb moment I remember messages straight away I was like yes I've got my name in there yeah that's how I that's how I keep with my name yeah that's fantastic and, and I know um I mean people can go on and search for free flow on uh 
Instagram. And actually, I'll put the links to Instagram website and, and your LinkedIn in the yeah. um, notes below in the YouTube. Yeah. Um, but the actual graphics that you've made as well are really beautiful for yeah. free flow. Um, yeah. You mentioned about having a bit of a rebrand right now yeah. is, is and a new website. Is that something where yeah. it's going to change a lot or will it just have like a bit of a refresh? I'm intrigued. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the Instagram account's still there. Um, I put the website on pause because I'm in the process of changing it. I think I made that when I was still quite amateur with Shopify. It I'm still looks really, really good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I was proud of it, but I've yeah. learned so much yeah. since then. I never actually had the time to actually work on my own website because I was working yeah. on other people's websites. So yeah. Since I actually made the website, Shopify has got a lot of new features, um, okay. particularly tailored towards service businesses. It used to it used to be strictly like brick and mortar okay. stores and e-commerce stores, yeah. but now it's got it can facilitate proper service websites. So I'm gonna look into that and see what I can do. Yeah. Amazing. So we've got like a, a free flow 2.0 on the horizon. Yeah, it'd yeah, be exciting to see how that comes. I mean, I think I'll be, I think my plan is to get it done by the end of this month. So hopefully we'll see. What that nice, looks like. so, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. So yeah, tell definitely. me about since you graduated, you're now yeah. in a, a full-time position, um, full-time yeah. role. Um, how does that, like, how, how did you make that decision to go into full-time and not into your own business? And how does that affect free flow at this point and what's your kind of thoughts sorry this is like three questions in one let me just give yeah. you one at a time because I'm like, <laughs> i can't get my questions out quick enough. okay yeah. number one tell me about your full, well you don't have to go into so much detail about your full-time role but how did you decide yeah. to go into a full-time position after yeah. graduating and not do free flow full-time i'm intrigued yeah so i made the conscious decision of going into full-time work as opposed to full-time freelance after uni because um, I really like the idea of, I was really interested in uh, tech in general, the industry, and I wanted some experience in tech, particularly tech yeah. sales. Yeah. And um, that was a conscious decision because I really wanted to learn more about how to articulate myself and speak to um, established business people. Yeah. And um while I am enjoying it, I feel like I've learned so much in terms of prospecting and um, closing mm. strategies as well. Yeah. So I think in terms of how I can apply that to free flow is mm. when I'm looking for prospects to um, do business with and actually getting them to move forward and finalise agreements and whatnot. I think I've learned a lot in that sense. And just in general, being a people person, how, having to have a, a flowing conversation with people is yeah. something I've learned from the back of my full time job. So. That's yeah. brilliant. And yeah. and I guess even those like softer skills, it's building on those as well, isn't it? Like yeah. being in business, being in a business and yeah. being in that environment amongst, amongst other professionals is like yeah. teaching you things that isn't as easy when you are on your own building your business. Um, so yeah. it's really nice because, I mean, we had a conversation with Caitlin um, yesterday yeah. and I know you've seen that video and that it's really what what we're seeing is that actually there isn't one path on how a maverick can then take their business after yeah. um after graduation and it's it's just great that we can see a different way you know you've gone into a full-time mm -hmm. role with a with yeah. a you in mind but also you have your business as a back well not, not really as a backup it, you have your, yeah. your business underpinning that yeah. But also I guess it's there as I mean I've been through a redundancy if I had a business underpinning that redundancy in 2010 yeah. then it would have felt less scary and I would have felt a little more in control so I guess yeah. hopefully you know you're not in that position of, of redundancy mm -hmm. but yeah, what you have you have um multiple income streams and I think that's yeah. something that these days is you know invaluable because the world changes so fast so, so what do you see as the future for free flow like how are things going to evolve over time and do you see yourself transitioning into free flow at full time at some point or do you always see this being 
kind of in the background and, and bubbling away and, you know, working on projects over, because I think you had a project over Christmas. So, you know, all yeah. these kind of things. Is, this, is it that it will kind of peak and trough as you need it to? Or is it that yeah. you think you'll transition full time into free flow at some point? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I think for the time being, I think it's something that I want to have in the background for that extra security and extra income stream yeah. because um, I could be going about my week and going to work and coming from work and then like I could take on a project on the side for that extra yeah. income. Yeah. And I think in the long run, in the grand scheme of things, it would be ideal to build up to a point where I wouldn't have to rely on a nine to five job or anything like that. So mm. yeah, I think that's what that's what the plan is to build up to that stage eventually. But for the time being, I think um, it's it's nice to have on the side of the minute. Yeah, and it sounds like it's working well for you. It sounds like you enjoy yeah. having this full time role and then having this yeah. on the side for variability, I guess, and having like yeah. different projects coming in. So thinking about the kind of clients that you attract as free flow. Um, yeah. what kind of businesses do you enjoy serving the most and what kind of services do you enjoy providing for them? Yeah, so I think what I like the most is probably food and beverage um, okay. companies. Yeah. Because I feel like that industry, businesses can tell their story so uniquely and being able to communicate that story for them for a website or for promotional social media posts is actually really enjoyable because... There's a lot of businesses that have like great USPs. I mean, they're sustainable and they've got a lot going on for them. And it's just getting yeah. that in front of a customer. It's challenging, but it's actually really fun at the same time. So I think that's what I enjoy the most. And you've had a few already, haven't you? You've had a few food and drink uh, yeah. customers already. And... Yeah. I, I worked with a nutritional beverage company, yeah. which was like a coffee alternative. And I'm also working on like a um, natural supplements and wellness um, brand as well at the moment. So awesome. yeah, really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell like from your energy, you can tell like you get a real buzz from, from working yeah. with you. So it's win-win. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think what I like most is I like working with startups more because yeah business owners and managers of startups they've got a lot of ideas of how to go to market they don't know how to execute the idea yeah. and being that being able to facilitate the idea for them and get it into the market is something that i really enjoy and i found a lot so I've, i'm looking forward to working with more startup companies and getting them um contributing to getting them more exposure you've hit the nail on the head there because I think yeah. this is what we see as touch points as a whole when we're working with businesses and helping them build their strategy it is that execution they need help with and this is where yeah. the mavericks really come into their own and they're able to yeah. kind of support and underpin everything that the business owner yeah. wants to create but doesn't have the knowledge all the time to do it yeah. so yeah definitely think you've hit the nail on the head so thinking about pricing um and you don't have to go into specifics but Obviously, as Mavericks, we focus on the 2020 rule initially. Um, yeah. How has that progressed for you? Like, because I know you develop websites and things for people. How do yeah. you now package that up and, and sell that as a service? I'd love to know. Yeah. So originally it, it was on the 20 rule or charging the client £20 an hour or X pound, X pound an hour. Um or like twenty pound per social per social media post, mm -hmm. but I think I've starting to move away from that now because I found that I've learned to do things very quickly, and sometimes it's not the time that's valuable; it's the actual. Uh, it's something else that I'm um providing, and so yeah, um, I'm I'm having conversations with you about that now and to how I yeah. Can, um, how I can price that so yeah I think that's an advantage of having your your advice and your mentorship in terms of how to move forward with that thank you yeah and it's 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 so important being able to yeah. because obviously we need a framework at the very beginning because then it's yeah. something that the businesses can then be like 20 pound an hour I can work with that but then obviously yeah. as a maverick your experience grows really fast your yeah. ability to do things gets quicker like you say and actually the value that yeah. you add changes because yeah, you can, yeah. if you're then making packages like a website yeah. Yeah. that is not a 20 pound an hour 
project. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, this is this is where stage three of Mavericks will really come into its own. And it was something Definitely. that um, Caitlin mentioned yesterday after the call is that having like a support network of being on a call where we can all, you know, yeah. I feel like it's my job to challenge your pricing theory yeah. um, and to move that forward because, yeah. you know, as, as as I said to you before, your customers will never want to pay you more. It's my job um, to push you in the I'm payment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I'll, I'd only ever do that from a point of view that if I can see you can make more money on something because I know the customers will pay it and that it adds the value to the customer, obviously, we always want yeah. everything to be win-win. But yeah. instead of underpricing and the customer thinking, why is it so cheap? It can't be that good. We're actually yeah. pricing you and other mavericks, you know, building yeah. up your pricing structure to, to help. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that next step yeah. with you going on that journey. Yeah. And I think what you mentioned about um, initially starting off, I think a challenge that I particularly had was I had sort of like an imposter syndrome in terms of, mm. I thought I was charging way more than I was actually delivering, um, especially considering I used to work like part-time on like eight or nine pounds an hour yeah. to charging 20 pounds an hour. It's like, yeah. should I be doing that? But people are actually willing to pay that because there's yeah. a lot of value that they get from that service. So yeah, I just mm -hmm. thought I'd mention that's something that I particularly was going through when I started. But that's yeah, I'm moving really away from that now. Yeah, yeah. that's good yeah. feedback. It's really interesting. And, yeah. you know, there's there's things we need to take into account because you you turning up at a role where you're paid, yeah. you know, the minimum wage or whatever that is at that point, yeah. they are taking into account holiday pay and sickness pay and all of these things, yeah. benefits, whereas actually when you run your own business, you then have yeah. tax to pay on that income. Enough. You know, that 20 pound isn't fully yours. Um, so it's about, you know, and then you might need an accountant to pay for and insurance and all these things yeah. that yeah. need to come yeah. out of that money. So it is, you know, it's, it's, it's priced in a way to help you have like a stake in the ground to start from and not worry about pricing from day one. Um, yeah. So I'm glad the tip, um, provided structure for you to feel like, well, Vic said it's twenty pounds, so I'm going to start with twenty pounds. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was good to have that sort of like, um, yeah, structure, hundred percent. Oh god. So yeah. whilst we're thinking about looking back, um, some of the questions I've had some really good questions from our current Mavericks, and and one of them yeah. is that, um, looking back, would you do the same again? Would you go through the Mavericks program and create your side business so that you've got that as you as you graduated or would you prefer yeah. looking back and obviously like I'm in the room so you can say like no I'd prefer to have just gone and got a job that's absolutely yeah. fine but, but would you do it again if yeah. if you were in that position yeah a hundred percent I wouldn't look back at all because it provides invaluable skills that you can have whether you want to travel like Caitlin or whether you want to yeah. work full-time like me or even when you want to take it full time as well, like the 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 little stuff you get out of it, such as like best practices on networking and building relationships with people, and um, yeah, just having a skill, whether it be digital marketing or any other type of marketing, you can take that away with you, and those skills are transferable in so many different parts of life. So yeah, that's that's what I would I, I wouldn't look back at all. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, you, you could have said, no, absolutely not, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, no, that's really good to know because obviously they're at this point where it's January, you know, they're going to be graduating yeah. in the summer and they've got decisions to start making. So for them to hear from yeah. yourself and from Caitlin at this point and hear the truth on, you know, it doesn't really matter what your next step is but by having mavericks under your belt means that you can kind of you've got those extra skills like you said but then you've yeah. also got an underlying business that if you apply for jobs and you're not getting them or if yeah. you do decide to go full in definitely you know 100 percent. it's good to have yeah. yeah um what other questions have we got here so we've talked about niche and we talked about what services you offer um, here's a good one from the Maverick. So what are the key lessons that you've learned 
going through the Maverick programme and since becoming a Maverick? I think a key lesson that I've learned, and it's actually, I see it's a quote online that I've came across. I think it's something along the lines of like, pleasure in the work, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. And that really resonated with me because when you actually enjoy what you're doing, and I find like graphic design, website design very stimulating, yeah. I feel like success will only come as a byproduct of that. Yeah. So but I think that's the biggest thing I've learned. That is such a great quote. Where's that from? Do you know? I, I came across it oh. not too long ago. I can't remember where I seen we'll it. We'll have but, to Google yeah. that one. You'll have to have it written yeah. up somewhere. Like, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Pleasure in the work is perfection in the job. Is that what it was? Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. Oh, I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like because there's that passion for something, yeah. you want to do it really, really well in it. And you do like I've seen your output. I've seen the work, the work that you do, and the posts and the websites. And yeah. you know, I feel really proud of what you achieve <laughs> because I know yeah. that it's, um, you know, I can I, I can see the difference that that the program's yeah. made and that it really yeah. brought out. It's brought your skills to the top and helped you to yeah. focus on that. Yeah, and it's often I'm really appreciative on all this. So. Oh. Yeah. Cool um let me just double check in case there's any more questions from the mavericks oh this is a good one what do you enjoy the most and the least about working in your own business so i think that's another good question i think what i enjoy the most is probably the freedom that you get yeah. so the freedom to do things how you want when you want you can work wherever you want um the least would probably be sometimes the burnout when you're putting when you're creating a lot of like output. It's easy to get um, burnout very quickly, considering it create like it requires like a lot of creative thinking and that sort of stuff. So I've found it hard to come back from. Well, like I found it when, when I do do a lot of work in a short period of time, I get burnout quickly, and then for that reason, I will sort of neglect that work and procrastinate and won't come back to it that's something that I've been struggling with, struggling with and something that I'm working on so that would probably be my least favorite part of having my own business thank you for being so honest about that because that's that's yeah. that's really massive that, yeah. that that you've recognized it in yourself and that you can yeah. use that information to then put strategies in place to to prevent that so yeah. how did you recognize that how how did you kind of see that's what was happening what were the warning yeah. signs so what i how i recognized that was i found that out like my productivity levels were sometimes inconsistent at times so i'd be very productive and i'd do a lot of work in like one month but then because i'd be doing while i was at uni i had um, especially my final year i had my dissertation i had my other exams on my part-time job on top of um that a research initiatives I was doing in Europe, I found it very hard to, uh, I found it very hard to have like um, that balance. So when I did do marketing work, it was like, it was good in the moment, but after you finish a project, it takes so much out of you and you won't want to do another project straight after again, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just need a bit of like creative time, time out. Yeah yeah to let your but, brain recover a bit yeah yeah and yeah th that's one way of something that I've been working towards I've also found that just taking regular breaks and not being so hard on myself I remember those times when I was at uni where I'd be up at stupid hours just creating websites and stuff and obviously I didn't have a great um byproduct of that but yeah that's that yeah that's one way to um like have frequent breaks in between certain tasks that you're doing so frequent so recognizing it first by seeing those warning lines uh yeah. lights um taking frequent breaks having a bit of time out in between projects where possible yeah. to re, re kind of recalibrate yeah. um well, anything else that you do to help with that um make sure you're doing something um like stimulating outside of that so whether it's going to the gym or just going on walks and stuff something yeah. that 
takes you away from the desk because yeah. like staring at your screen too much and yeah it's, it's not it's not good for you considering we're students and we've already got assignments and whatnot so they yeah, are great out. tips yeah so valuable so valuable yeah. because even I'm thinking yes I need to do this yes I need to do this yeah. so, so thank you yeah. for reminding me that I need to do these things yeah. but also great tips for the Mavericks to hear for them to kind of build this way of thinking and way of working in from day yeah. one because he, them being able to hear this from you helps them to yeah. start on the good footing and yeah. you know in the middle of you saying all of that about you know being awake at midnight making websites and stuff you yeah. got first in your degree as well yeah. as well yeah. as looking after clients yeah i was really surprised with that honestly <laughs> just, it was very it was when i found out yeah yeah i bet that i mean that's yeah. just yeah such a proud moment too Lau. i'm so happy yeah. for you you're just you're just smashing it you're doing so well and and just such a nice person as well you know so like you're very easy for me to refer people to because i know you're going to do a great job and you're going to look after clients properly yeah yeah so i appreciate it thank you no thank you it's it's <laughs> good it's good i'm loving these success stories um okay so we've gone through i think we've gone through all the questions that that we have from yeah. I'm miss myself and from the Mavericks. Is there anything else that you want to tell the Mavericks or that you want information you want to help them with or any yeah. anything that you can think of that might be supported before we finish? Yeah, so um I was speaking to you this speaking uh, speaking to you about this not too long ago. Um the reason why I decided to get things up and running again was actually like I did have a break while I was while I've been working full time. But um, while I'm working full time, I've been having conversations with people, like friends, um, colleagues, and stuff that want to start their own businesses. But and they've, and considering like my background in marketing, they've asked for advice. And what I think is just general advice and just common sense. They're like, "Wow, yeah, this is great advice." Like they'd actually pay for that sort of advice. So I was like, "Okay, wow, well, yeah, I need to get back on it." I messaged um, you about it, and I was like, "Yeah, let's let's get this up and running again." Oh, Tula, I get goosebumps yeah. honestly because yeah. that's just the thing, isn't it? Like we take for granted the fact that yeah. knowing about marketing, we just think everybody understands all of this and they, that they get it. Yeah. But like you've pointed out, people have come to you just asking you the question. And you're thinking, "Is there a <laughs> pay for this?" <laughs> <laughs> And I, this is yeah. this comes easy to me as in you. Yeah. Then you know, yeah. I mean, things like that kind of point out that it's a good time to start. Like you say, it's a perfect time to start yeah. ramping things back up in the background. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, this goes without saying. And I'm, I know you're the kind of person that would. But you know, for yeah. for any other mavericks listening, that when having a full time job or a part time job, it's it is important that the employer knows that there is something else going on in the background because yeah. you know just in case there's ever a conflict of interest or you know just in case there's something in the contract that says you cannot take on another type of work yeah. and I know Tula you're you've got all the dots and uh, dots crossed dots t's crossed and i's dotted or whatever yeah, the thing is. So, yeah. yeah but it's just important to highlight for, um, for mavericks who are thinking about having a part-time or full-time job whilst yeah. well setting up but yeah it's it's definitely pointing to the time is right for free yeah. flow marketing 2.0 yeah to make a return 100 percent. yeah oh thank you so much for your time today really it's appreciate okay. it and i know the mavericks will be lapping up all this information and it will really help them to work out yes this is the route for me or actually no it's not or it's not yet so yeah Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, Thanks, keep yeah. us posted with what's happening next. Oh, of course, definitely. Yeah, I'll be sure to share any developments with anything that's going on. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Brilliant. Thanks so yeah. much. Speak to you soon. Okay. I'll see you. Bye-bye.